Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on a commission for a super sweet customer who wanted a doll that looked sort of gothic and had sort of a dead look in the face but also pretty. So I'll be sharing with you how I made the bouquet, the costume, the face up, and also how I prepared the hair for rerouting. So I jumped right into the bouquet because I really wanted to try this technique with some uh, making these petals. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, I actually have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I made this bouquet and some other flower techniques in the reward library. So what I did is I took some, uh, making sure that it was not cotton ribbon, but it was more like a satiny ribbon, and sort of singed the edges to make them into petals and sewed them through uh, on a needle just and thread just to make little flowers and added a bead to the inside. Since I've done this technique, I've made a couple more bouquets and some flower hair uh, accessories, and I've really enjoyed how they look. They look slightly more realistic than those little flowers, satin flowers that you'd uh, purchase at craft stores, so they're just a little more natural looking because of the burned edges make it look more like a flower, I think. And when they're bunched together, I think they just look super cute. So I hot glued them to some wires and attached them um, by twisting the wire around. And then I believe I took some floral tape to wrap around the stems. I can't quite remember. I might have just added ribbon. I'm sorry, I did uh, make this a few months ago. Bef I, there was sometimes there's a long period of time between when I do the voiceover and when I make the actual doll. So the customer gave me a, like a photo reference of a model holding a large bouquet of flowers. So I really wanted to concentrate on making sure this was to scale and like a nice huge um, bunch of flowers and that the shape was particularly sort of oval like the photo that the customer sent. So I did use some more hot glue. If you do it this way, please be careful. I burn my fingers all of the time. But it, if I'm using a very small amount of hot glue, I like to just use a lighter and burn that and then um, drip it onto there rather than getting out my hot glue gun and making a mess with that. So I'm adding some ribbon with the hot glue. I did first just wrapped it around the bottom and then I do sort of a wrap around just to make sure there's the ultimate coverage of that wire. So moving on to the costume, I just made a straight skirt for um, the uh, gown. Uh, the customer wanted a specific sort of silhouette, so I made it sort of uh, fitted. And I was using a heat tool to sort of iron the inseams, but uh, I've since bought a mini uh, iron and little ironing board that works a little bit better. So I added some detail lace to the back and then made a little, sort of a little vest robe to go over top of it. So now I'm working with some alpaca fiber. Sometimes when you purchase from, uh, like a purchase from uh, Etsy sellers that are like local farmers that have that sell alpaca fiber some of them wash them quite a bit and some of them just do an initial wash so they do need wash and so I thought I'd share with you guys how I wash the uh, fiber and so just being careful taking little bits at a time I'll wash it in some soapy water just like some shampoo they usually come with little bits like this of protein and it's just you know from their hay or feed 
So um, just want to make sure that you're washing that all out. So it, you do uh, want to do a few different washes, a few wash sessions to get those nice and clean. And then I add a little bit of leave-in conditioner to them to make it a little bit easier to brush through. And then I use my, this is sort of like a dog brush, and I'll use that to brush the hair out. And again, I take it just one chunk at a time and just holding it tightly at one end using the dog brush to try to save as much of that fiber as I can. I know this is going kind of fast, it's not really a tutorial, but I'm just sharing how I do this when it comes to using alpaca fiber. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But once it's dry, that's I, I wanna, you wanna wait until it's completely dry before you brush it out because otherwise it'll kind of tug and, and curl up and frizz out a little bit. Once I have a good bit, uh, sort of a nice chunk of hair then I'll attach some a, a little mini rubber band to hold that section together make sure it's nice and combed and then I put them away to store until I use them and I just wrap them in some tissue to keep them from getting tangled as much as possible when I'm ready to use them then I'll just take one section out and take a few pieces and just root it as usual it's a little more challenging to work with than say yarn and it doesn't fill in uh, as much as if you're using yarn um, but it does get a little bit thicker and fuller than if you're using um, like synthetic hair. So I hope you guys found that helpful. So next we're moving on to the face up. And I'm starting that as usual with the shapes of the eyes in white Derwent watercolor pencils. The supplies that I use are in the description box below along with a link to my Amazon storefront where I am usually updating that. I've, I've recently updated a lot of the supplies that I use in there and I just put a little bit of information as to how I use those products. So if you um, go to the storefront you can see the majority of my supplies let me know if you have any questions like if there's anything missing um, and if you make any purchase through purchases from Amazon through that storefront I get a small commission as well by the way if you're a supporter over on patreon I have a new step-by-step -step PowerPoint document walking through how I do a face up it's a beginner, um, but it also has some intermediate techniques that I've updated for 2021. It's similar to one that I shared in 2019. Uh, that was, uh, but I've uh, added some, I've done worked on another doll to take those photos for this one and updated it with some new techniques since some of my patrons have been with me for quite a while and I'm sure they wanna see some new stuff. So this one, um, like I said, I'd launched it for the January 2021 Game Changer Reward and it can be found in the reward library, but it's a temporary post. So make sure that you go in there and uh, download it because it'll be taken down in April. Also, just a reminder, I do have some classes on Skillshare. There's a link in the description box below as well for my Skillshare. I have, <clears throat> excuse me, a beginner class for face-ups and a beginner class for rerouting with yarn. And I'm doing my best to try to get a new class up. I'm just trying to find the time there. <laughs> Uh, but if you the if the link to the Skillshare class is in the description box below, and uh, you can get two free weeks at this time. I believe it's two free weeks with the link below. It'll tell you once you click that, you know what you can, how much you can, how many weeks that you get before you would be charged, and you can cancel at any time. I really love Skill Skillshare personally, and my um, year subscription's coming to an end, and I think I'm going to renew because I really enjoy taking classes. They help me a lot with a lot of the um, 
A lot of my art techniques that I can carry over into working on dolls, like uh, color theory and um, using pastels and airbrushing techniques. So it's a really great platform for learning when you need that, you know, learn at your own pace, step by step more in depth than what you can find on YouTube. So for her face, I'm using some blues and white with mixed with some white and some purples. Uh, just kind of making her look a little bit more uh, like death, just like no bloods flowing through her face and adding a little bit more blue to her under eyes to give her sort of a gaunt look. Making her lips look pretty natural. Just some light pinks to look like she's not got a lot of uh, blood flow in there. <laughs> got my camo band-aid on I think I burned myself pretty good with that hot glue so like I said be very careful if you use my glue techniques <laughs> so I know it's been a little while since I uploaded a video I took a little bit to reset after the holidays and plan my 2021 year. I shared with my patrons that many of the plans I have um, for taking commissions and participating in shows, um, I've got a lot planned out. But for YouTube in particular, I've set some goals to be able to upload videos that are more useful and packed full of tips. So let me know in the comments below what you would like to see as far as tips and tricks and my processes. Um, by the way, I always love to hear what types of dolls and characters you'd like to see. I do have to work mainly by commission, so I don't, I do it for a living, so I don't really have too much control over the characters, but I do have a goal to do a few this year that aren't commissioned, so I'd love to hear what you'd like to see me work on. So as you can see, I added a little bit of blush and some color to her lips, and I'm constantly kind of having to keep control over the amount of color that I'm adding because I need to keep that sort of light death look. So I'm carefully adding detail um, and just very a little at a time so I don't push it too far and give her too much of a dark blush or a bright color lip. So I'm working on keeping the pupils symmetrical. And how I usually do that is go back and forth between each eye to and kind of judge how um, close they are, add a little bit of width to one or the other. So finally, I didn't want to add too much black um, to making the eyes look more, you know, of that ghostly look. Um, so here I'm finally starting to add a little bit. I wanted to use different colors to make it look a little more realistic rather than just, you know, dark circles with black under the eyes. You want to add some different colors to add, make the adding, as you can see, I'm using a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, and that can make it look more realistic.
working on my least favorite part, which is the eyebrows. <laughs> They're always so challenging for me, uh, but I try to make them symmetrical by adding a little dot and then holding the doll away from my face to make, just kind of try to make them as even as possible. And always before I do the eyelashes, I'll make sure to give her some sealant so that I don't damage any of the under eye eyeshadow or work that I've done under the eyes by erasing because I sometimes have to erase those lashes. So it's good to have a lot of sealant to, to make sure that if you need to erase that you're not going to erase the work that you've done underneath. And one of my favorite parts is adding the highlights to the eyes. I always feel like that just brings it to life. And here she is. I made her a little crown out of warbler and also a lantern. So if you liked the video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.